Hi all, so just finished porting this 3D graphics engine by JavaX9, also known as One Lone Coder, to JavaScript. So from now on, you can run it directly in a web browser. Okay, so long story short, I've dropped a couple of videos already covering um, the end results for parts 1 and 2, which were not really uh, neither exciting nor quite useful, I believe. And this one, the third part, uh, brought really lots of challenges and I made another video uh, demonstrating like how I've been fighting with uh, the clipping box where I had just uh, some triangles not being displayed and just lost somewhere. A true detective story to say the least, so check that video if you're interested as well, like in if you're interested in the internal workings of how this can be implemented and some potential pitfalls you might fall into if you're doing this in JavaScript at the very least. And without further ado, um, let me demonstrate the end results again. So to my to my current understanding, so this should be exactly the same as of the code in the part three version. So doing that or not, but again the the heart of the 3D graphics engine on its own is literally here. So uh, let's get into it. So we still have our cube. Okay, now we can move the camera, which is good. Well, but yeah, I've been demonstrating this in the previous video uh, as well, but now clipping is working properly. But yeah, obviously cube isn't the most exciting mesh ever. So just like in the original project, uh, we can load the obj models uh, and since in javascript we don't really have like the access to the back end unless this is the electron app or something but this is just a pure browser implementation so i have the textual data stored directly in the variables for every single what well, takes time for every single element that is available here and i've been using the original models uh by one lone code and the reason for that is because you need to make sure that uh, the order of uh, vertices is like how, how it should be what it should be and if you're not sure what am i talking about you better check out his tutorials like part two in particular if not mistaken or even part one so somewhere where he just demonstrates how he uses blender to generate this uh models and like how to properly export a model from from Blender to this OBJ, uh, OBJ file, and then you can just uh, load this within the engine, within this 3D engine in particular. Okay, um, so I have the teapot, the axis, starship, and the mountain. So those uh, that has been provided in his uh, on his GitHub repo. All right, so um, let's kick start with the starship. So again, with a low polygon models, uh, the frame, the FPS, like frame rate is quite okay. So like 30 FPS, well, not the most exciting ever FPS, but this is JavaScript, so bear that in mind. So, so just moving the camera around, I can just walk from from the other side. Yeah, it's better just like this. So yeah, it's like uh, well, clipping might be disabled. So every time when you see that, uh, like this red green blue triangle so that's just clipping so clipping means that triangles are being like not as uh, as huge as they are originally but just being transformed to fit either like they can be clipped against the borders of the screen or um, something else like you know um, something else like uh, the depth clipping as well so this is the starship and obviously uh just like in the original uh tutorials it can be rotated so let me just try to so it's just the view angle i believe uh here so if i just uncomment one two three four lines of code they should already be like rotating nicely and I can still step aside from it yeah so that I can view this from from the distance like this so yeah rotation is still on the cards but uh, I just drop back because it would be really like too slow with the models involving more polygons like 
high polygon models. So now, like, even without the video recording, so where it was like one frame per second, maybe extremely laggy, extremely slow, because uh, like the teapot, for instance, has really lots of um, polygons in it. So I will probably need to minimize, like, uh, either to change the resolution, but the easier way to do this is just to make the window smaller. So I'll probably go for the second scenario here. Uh, anyway, so just oh, just one more thing that is extremely useful for uh, useful for debugging that was introduced in the previous video. The axis is really good for uh, this uh, debugging clipping the triangles against the screen borders. It's really um, really cool. Well, in generally, yeah, really really nice model. So I really like this one. So this is really cool, and yeah, so axis all right let's uh go hardcore so teapot it has like really lots of polygons so we just probably just dice yeah so <laughs> fps is not is not loaded even yes yeah, so it's it's really like <laughs> one frame in two seconds maybe okay so let me try to minimize okay so don't say that it works much better, but if I go somewhere inside the teapot, yeah, <laughs> where I don't have that many polygons to to calculate yet, I'm, I'm supposed to be kind of inside the teapot now. Okay, somewhere in here maybe. Yeah, so it's, well, not the best of a model to, <laughs> to play around with because I, the the biggest amount of polygons are here. Okay, let me just try to step aside. Well, it's still, yeah, it's extremely laggy, so 27 would now drop, I believe. Um, yeah, it's no longer 27, I believe. Yes, it's really dying. Again, like, without video recording software, at least it's, like, more or less, like, uh, usable. But, yeah, with this one. Well, anyway, so this is JavaScript, so what would you expect? And also the code is not really optimized uh, in order to m keep being didactic, which I personally love so much because, like, for... Mates like me, that's something really essential. Okay, so one last um, is the mountains. Um, so if I just go like, yeah, so this one even works. And yeah, by the way, another interesting thing, yeah, so you see like, uh, we can still make it like full screen, but the actual width and height remain uh, like, it wasn't that small window. So see like it gets scale. So, this is how you can do both, like the full screen, but the lower resolution. I'm not quite sure what the resolution is. It, yeah, three FPS is definitely sucks, but, but again, yeah, this is JavaScript. Video recording somewhere isn't helping. So, but but all of these polygons are getting calculated. So yeah, and the clipping is working. And yes, I'm absolutely amazed by this. And again, guys. So since um. My initial goal of making this then I wasn't really going either to learn about 3D graphics or uh, try to make my own engine. I wasn't really interested in that. in that. What I was really looking for is to create a Minecraft-like environment that would allow me to build 3D logical circuits. So like so that I could build like the logic and gate, logic or gate, something that you can make in Minecraft using redstones and torches, but a bit more simplified and a bit more specified for this particular purpose. So I don't need any other Minecraft features other but this uh, binary logic, and that's pretty much all about it. So, but anyway, I'm incredibly satisfied with the end result because, like initially, I wasn't even go into add this code that would be allowing to load the models but it's it's very simple uh, and it's just the matter of passing the plain text file and in JavaScript it's done much easier as opposed to C++ for instance so yeah if you have a faster computer than I have like my laptop is very old so on a modern left laptop or on a modern computer I believe uh, you should get at least like 15 frames per second with this like complicated models. But again, uh, if we just drop back to some of the very basic model, like for instance, this axis, then ultimately um, it's just absolutely okay. And 
like 43 frames per second if I don't have the video recording so well I have 58 frames per second so yeah guys this is from my side thanks for watching see you later and cheers